There's a pretty insane number of 3D printing filaments to choose from, and I'm not talking on a chemical level, although there certainly are, but strictly speaking, different filament brands for, let's just say, PLA, for example. And if you were to go and ask someone that's into 3D printing, what is your favorite or what is the best filament, and then ask another person, another person, I can guarantee you that almost all of the answers are going to be very different with maybe a little bit of overlap. And part of the reasoning is, is that not everybody has the same requirements or the same things that they feel are valuable. To some, maybe it's the lowest price point, while others want a nice spool and packaging. Uh, how many colors are in this catalog of material? How well is the material wound? What is the consistency like? There, there's just so many factors and those are just a few of them. And I really feel like with 3D printing filament, it's almost like different flavors of ice cream in that Everyone has their own preference. There's not necessarily one right or wrong, although I personally think cookies and cream is by far one of the best. And even in the same type of filament that might have the same chemical makeup, there is a wide range of price points. For example, PLA, you can find a very low cost of PLA around the $10 mark, and some of the more premium brands of PLA can go for anywhere between $30 to $40 for the same amount of material and weight. Regardless of your flavor or filament preference, the material is only going to maintain a certain level of freshness, if you will, for so long once it has been exposed to the environment. And the two primary things that you have to take into consideration are things like dust and debris, as well as humidity and moisture. On this channel so far, we've taken a look at two primary different filament drying solutions. The first was an inline dryer where the filament's supposed to enter the this box wet and then come out dry in pretty much real time while it's printing, which was really disappointing. And then we've also been using the Sunlu Filo Dryer S1, which has been the primary drying solution I've used over the past year. And it has worked relatively well and it's definitely done what I have needed to. However, recently I ran into some of its limitations. And over the past couple of weeks here, I've been playing around with two different filament drying solutions that I think are definitely superior to the S1 and it will be replacing it as well as a new sort of simple filament storage solution that I'm also going to be implementing. So today's video, we will cover my updated thoughts on the S1 and those limitations. We'll take a look at these two new filament dryers as well as the storage solution. And hopefully that will allow you to sort of decide what it is that you want to do to ensure your filament is optimal for your 3D printing needs. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. So in the first four years of 3D printing, I was incredibly spoiled in that where I lived wasn't exactly a desert, but it was very, very dry and I never had issues with wet filament. And I never understood when people asked me how I stored my filament, I told them just out in the open on a rack, why they questioned that. And it wasn't until uh, a couple of years ago now that I moved closer to the coastline or the ocean where it became evident that I was very spoiled and in a unique situation compared to many other people. And since moving out here, I have definitely had a lot of issues with PTGs, TPUs have been a nightmare, nylons are horrendous, and PVA has been just absolutely the worst. And Luckily, I have, at least for the past year or so now, had the Sunlu Filo Dryer, which I've primarily used with PETG because PETG is the second most common material I print with behind PLA. And overall, it's done a relatively good job of drying out the PETG. And as long as I keep it in there, sort of maintaining that state of dryness while I'm printing out things. However, there are a couple of things about the S1 that I never really liked, and they became a bit more evident as time went on and I got more time using it. And the first of those things was that there is no fan on the S1. And the issue with that is that you've got this heating element inside that is warming the material, but there's not a good way to evacuate the humid air out and get new air in to sort of keep that cycle going of bringing in fresh air and removing the humid air. And so it, it, I can definitely state that it does work, but I don't feel that it's nearly as effective as it can be because of that lack of airflow. And second, which is the one that really got to me lately was that it has a temperature cap of 55 Celsius. And 
55 Celsius is actually even lower than I would like for drying out something like PETG. I would like to have it at least at 60, if not 65 Celsius, but it has worked. It's just a slower process. And recently I tried drying some nylon, which it just did not dry out. The, the nylon I wanted closer to 70 Celsius, so the 55 Celsius was just too low. And I tried drying out some very, very wet PVA, which took an entire three days to even get it to a printable state, which was incredibly frustrating. And that brings us to today. A little over a month ago, iBoss reached out to me letting me know that they had a filament dryer called the Cyclopes that pretty much answered all of the, or, or corrected all of the issues that I had with the S1 and asked if I was interested in testing it out. And I said, absolutely. And the reasons for that was, one, it does have a fan in the base of it that helps to pull new air in, and it's got vent holes on the top, which you can very clearly feel the warm air exiting, or the, the warm and humid air exiting the machine. And it also has a max temperature of 70 Celsius, which is an entire 15 degrees, or 15 Celsius higher than the S1 has, which I was very, very excited about. The Cyclopes can fit two one kilogram spools, which the S1 can only fit one, or it can fit a one three kilogram spool. So if you do have a larger roll of material, you can fit that, which is something you definitely cannot do with the S1. On top of that, there's also a humidity sensor. So there's a little sensor inside in a screen so you can read the, the current humidity levels inside the chamber where your filament's at, which I quite enjoyed. It was very exciting to stick the filament in there, see what it was at, and then come back an hour or two later and see that dropping substantially. While with the S1, I never had a way to really accurately uh, monitor what the humidity was inside of it. I just, you know, if I printed with it and it wasn't popping, then and the quality was better, that was that was my reference. So having some form of actual measurement was really, really nice. Now, the one thing that the S1 does have going for it over the Cyclopes is price. And the S1 you can get on Amazon for anywhere between 45 to 55 ish dollars. While the Cyclops is quite a step up in price from there. If you get it from the manufacturer's website directly, it is $120. While if you order on Amazon at the time of making this video, it is $150, which is three times the price of the S1. And although it is a superior drying solution that allows you to dry twice as many things in a quicker rate, I do understand that not everybody is going to want to spend that much money, especially if you're someone that's just needing to dry out the occasional spool of material. Well, I am very happy to let you know then that iBoss also has another dryer. The Cyclops has been out for a little bit of time now, but this new one called the Ease Dry, which is brand new, they were actually taking pre-orders around the time that they sent this out, and I believe they are going to begin shipping any week now, is a much smaller solution, but still has a lot of the features I like about the bigger Cyclops. It has the fan built into it, it has a humidity sensor, and although it doesn't hit 70 Celsius, it does hit 65 Celsius, which is way better than the 55 Celsius of the uh, S1. And when I asked about pricing, the pre-orders are around, I think, $45 for the unit, and I asked if the pricing was going to stay at that level when the pre-orders were done, and they let me know their target is right around the $50 price point. So again, it puts it neck and neck with the S1. And in my opinion, the fan, the higher temperature uh, and the humidity sensor definitely make it a superior unit. One thing I actually like on the Ease Dry more so than on the Cyclops is the sort of adjustment knob that they have. So most filament dryers like the S1 or even their Cyclops, you basically set the temperature in Celsius and that's that's it. The machine heats up to that point and maintains that. And although that's fine, and I'm sure after using it a little bit, you'll memorize what material needs to be at what temperature. They've got a little booklet with a nice little graph. Well, on the Ease Dry, it just has a knob with no Celsius ratings, but just it states basically PLA, ABS, PTG, TPU, nylon, uh, I think PVA. And so you don't have to remember any of that. You just turn on the machine, set it to what material it is you're putting in there, and it does the rest. And you can see in the booklet too what each of those different metrics stand for, but I think that that is a very, very simplified solution and makes it where you don't have to remember anything. You just turn it on, set it to what you want, and it does, it does the rest. And so after having used these things, my kind of strategy now is going to be I will use the Cyclops for larger spools, of course. Uh, if I'm using a dual extrusion 3D printer that I need to have like some material, like let's say 
you know, multiple nylons or a nylon and a water soluble or something along those lines. Or if I am going to be batch drying out things to then put away in store. While with the ease dry, I am planning on using that uh, next to a 3D printer. And honestly, at that price point and what my experience has been like with this thing so far, I'm probably going to be picking up a couple of more of them once they're done with the pre-orders and just have maybe three of them next to a couple of printers. So that way for things like PTG, I can just shove them in there, turn them on. I don't have to worry about any of the issues with them absorbing moisture in, in this place. All right, I know that that was a lot of talking about the machines, but I wanted to get that out of the way before we actually jump into some printing. And for all the prints I'm gonna show you guys, I used the Prusa Mini and I used the exact same G-code on the dry and on the wet uh, prints. The only difference is I ran the print, I dried the material with one of these machines and then I printed the exact same thing again. There have been no other changes at all. So starting off, I went ahead and used some Overture Black PETG. I've had this PETG for at least a year, if not two years and it's been completely open just sitting on a shelf. And so I went ahead and printed out the Raspberry Pi Zero case that I made a couple of weeks ago because I actually need a few more of them. I went ahead and ran the print expecting it to look terrible. And of course it looked, it looked great. And I was hoping at this point that this wasn't gonna be a case of your car is acting up, you take it to the mechanic and it just performs beautifully. But even though that print turned out great, I did go ahead and throw it into the Cyclopes for the two hours that it recommended for PETG. And I ran the print again. And honestly, you can be the judge for yourself, but side by side, I couldn't see any difference at all between the before and after print, which was disappointing. Although again, when I saw the print come off the printer, when it was, you know, not dried, I didn't see how it could perform any better. Next up, I went with some Engen, and Engen is basically a form of a PETG as well. And this blue Engen I've had for maybe about a year now, and I've had moisture problems with this material. So I knew that it should be giving me problems. And I decided that I would sort of print something that was a bit more difficult to see if I can if I can get it to really showcase that there was water or moisture in the filament before. And so I went ahead and printed out Angus's new torture uh, castle that has some things like overhangs, quite a bit of retractions, and there's a lot more going on with it. So I sliced it up, I hit print, and then I went ahead and uh, once again, used the exact same dryer, which was the Cyclopes for the two hours, and I printed it again. And with this one, I was definitely able to see a difference before and after. The wet version of the material had a lot more stringiness. It was both uh, thicker strings as well as more dense strings, while the dried version of the PETG after two hours had a lot less stringing and it wasn't nearly as dense. On top of that, it didn't pick up nearly as well on camera, but if I actually look at the surface finish of the two, the wet, the wet engine or the wet PETG does have some more artifacts on the surface while the dried version is, is a lot smoother. So I was very happy to see the results. And uh, this, both these times when I was drying, I could clearly see that when I shoved the, um, the PETG into the uh, Cyclops that when I put it in there, it was around like 40% humidity. And when I was printing with it two hours later, it was somewhere between like 10 to 15%. So it was, it was doing its job. And I was very happy to see that this one at least reflected that correctly. Next up, it was time to print out some TPU and TPU is something that I have had a hell of a time with here. It absorbs moisture very quickly. And uh, usually I can hear it popping while it's printing. So I went ahead and grabbed some, it was Matter Hackers Build Series Green TPU. And I printed out a Benchy. The reason why I chose a Benchy again was similar to the Torture Castle. There's overhangs, there's some retractions, there's a bit of bridging. So I figured it would be a pretty good test to kind of see, to hopefully sort of exaggerate the wet filament and the dry filament so we could really see the difference. And when I went ahead and sliced it up and printed it out, just, as I, just like I expected, I was actually able to hear the popping of the material. So I knew that this was a really, really wet TPU. And I think the end result of the Benchy really shows it. You can ignore the smokestack um, in the slicer profile. I have the fan cooling off. And so that's the reason why on the smokestack, it just got so hot that it sort of looks gloopy, but that is not related to the wet filament and just because the TPU got way too hot. But the, the surface quality of the wet TPU print was quite poor. There was a lot of stringing. And for this one, I actually dried it out on the ease dry. Um, I shoved it in there and I let it dry out for, I believe they recommended four hours. Um, so whatever the booklet that it came with recommended is what I did. And then I hit print again. And 
The difference between the two is pretty damn substantial. There was no more popping when it was printing. The surface finish is a hell of a lot better. The stringing is far, uh, far less noticeable on the one that was dried out. And so I was really happy to see that their small unit was also performing very, very well. And this TPU did an excellent job of sort of highlighting that. Next up, I tried some nylon that was probably three years old that has been open the entire time. I went ahead and printed out a piece for a Voron 0.1, basically a motor mount. And when I initially printed it, I heard a lot of popping um, also from this material, but I was really surprised that the surface finish or the surface quality and inner layer adhesion looked really, really good. The main issue that I had with it was that there was, it was warping like hell. Um, I printed it on the, the powder coated PEI with some glue stick, which is typically what I use uh, glue stick for nylon and does a great job, but it warped really, really bad. And so I went ahead and threw it into the Cyclopes, dried it out for the four-ish again hours they recommended, um, printed it again. And the main difference, uh, other than audibly not hearing the, the popping sound anymore, but the main difference I had was there was way less warping. And so what I think is, is that the moisture in the non-dry nylon made it where that made it difficult for the material to properly adhere to the glue stick I'd laid down while once it was dry, it had a much easier time. So when I put them side by side, you can see, but the settings, again, exact same. I, I didn't change anything other than drying the material and the warping went down a lot, uh, which, which is awesome. Lastly, I wanted to try some PVA, which is just an absolute nightmare. PVA is the worst when it comes to absorbing moisture. And again, on the Philodryer S1, it took me three days to get it to a usable state. And so I wanted to see how these units would perform. For this, I decided to just use the smaller ease dry just to kind of give the the closest comparison to something that's priced around the same price as the, the um, Sunlu S1. And in their guide, they recommend, I believe it was 55 Celsius, um, either 50 or 55 Celsius, which is whatever the PLA setting is at, and for two hours. And so I did took videos uh, before just, just to be basically loading the filament in because PVA is more meant for dual extrusion. Again, I just wanted to kind of see um, it, extruding it, how it would look and how it would extrude. And so when I initially extruded it, it was disgusting. It was popping, it was steaming. I mean, it was insane. I dried it for two hours. I went ahead and loaded it in again and extruded it and it was a little bit better, but it was still pretty bad after two hours. And honestly, I think that their, their rating or their recommendation for PVA is highly optimistic. And so I went ahead and let it sit in the dryer for a full 24 hours. And when I came back, that's when I started to see some pretty damn big differences. I wouldn't say at the 24 hour mark that it was perfect, but the level of popping and steaming was much, much less than it was the day before. And the results I got with this at 24 hours was pretty close to the results I got from the Philodryer S1, but three days later. So I was really happy to see this. And this, this PVA, not only is PVA terrible, but this PVA is years old. So if you have a PVA, you bake it out correctly, you store it correctly, and you maintain it, it's going to be able to dry a lot quicker. This was sort of worst case scenario. iBoss also carries these vacuum sealable bags that they sent over quite a few of them. And I've kind of fallen in love with them. The way they work is really simple. When you dry out your material and you're ready to put it away, you put it in their double Ziploc uh, bag then there is a small cap that you unscrew and there is a USB uh, USB powered pump that's included with it. And so you screw it onto that attachment point, press the button on it, it sucks out all the air in roughly 30 to 60 seconds. You then cap it again and you put it away. And I know I've seen people use other things like they've created dry boxes or use sort of like um, Tupperware, uh, like sealed Tupperware container type things. And I'm not saying that that doesn't work, but I like the bags because it's much more condensed and easier for me to store in my opinion than keeping boxes. And so uh, for me, it is a fantastic solution. And of course the bags are resealable. You can throw desiccant in there. And so I've already started um, 
All of the spools that I dried out during this video testing uh, are now in these sealed bags and moving forward, anytime I dry out or use a PTG, a TPU, a nylon, and definitely a PVA, I'm going to be using these bags and sort of transitioning everything over uh, to this storage solution. For PLA, I still don't really care other than the dirt and debris aspect of it. I don't really mind keeping them out, but for the rest of them, I am absolutely going to be using these storage solution sealed bags. As someone that's been having issues over the last year or so here with just wet filament in the most inconvenient times and figuring out ways that I can actually store my materials better, I am really, really excited for this solution. And I'd love to know in the comments down below how many of you have been dealing with issues with wet filament or I, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the issues that some people 3D printing are experiencing are actually related to wet filament and they just don't realize it. But let me know in the comments down below sort of like what your solution has been as far as storage and drying and um, you know, if you've been looking for a solution as well. And I will be sure to place links down below in the description over to all the different items that I talked about in this video, the two different dryers, as well as the storage solution. So that way, if you wanna check them out or pick up one for yourself, you can do so. And as mentioned, the Ease Dry was on like a pre-order around the time of recording this. So I'll place links over to their website. And then as soon as I get the thumbs up that they are now available on Amazon, I can update those links so that way um, I know a lot of people prefer to order from Amazon. I can place the links to Amazon as well. And if you've got any questions at all about any of these things and I don't have the answer, also let me know and I have no problem reaching out to the manufacturer to get those questions answered for you guys. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel, furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.